If you've got a snake plant in your home that is showing signs of stress, such as drooping or narrow leaves, but you have no idea why, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna go over 10 of the most common snake plant problems that you're probably experiencing yourself and explain what you need to do to fix them. Snake plants are generally pretty slow growing plants. It's not uncommon to only see a couple of new leaves emerge a year, but if your plant seems to have stopped growing entirely, then you've probably got an unhappy plant on your hands. Snake plants are super versatile and can tolerate pretty much all light levels from direct sun to deep shade, but you will see different growing patterns depending on where it is. They do need some light to photosynthesize and store energy for growth, despite what you might have heard, so don't put yours in a room with no windows. This is one surefire way to kill your plant. If you do have yours in a dark spot, then move it nearer to the window and you'll likely see more growth with the existing leaves getting bigger and new leaves emerging. You can even keep this plant in direct sun so if you have a sunny south facing position, consider keeping it there. If you're really struggling for natural light in your space, then you can always invest in a grow light to hang over your plant. I like the Sansi grow bulbs that you can put into your existing lamp fixture and you can grab yourself a 15% discount by using the code Sheffield15 at checkout on their website, which is linked below. In rarer cases, your plant might not be growing due to a lack of nutrients. Snake plants don't have extensive root systems, so it's unlikely your plant is root bound, but if you're not feeding your plant with a balanced fertilizer, then it might be struggling for a lack of nutrients. So feed your plant once a month during the growing season to ensure it can access the nitrogen it needs for good growth, but don't feed in the winter. Drooping leaves is a very common problem with snake plants and thankfully easy to rectify once we identify why. Overwatering is by far the most common cause of droopy leaves and this simply happens because beginner plant parents don't understand that snake plants require very little water to thrive. You basically need to treat your plant like a succulent. I only water mine probably every couple of months and I live in a temperate climate. If you live somewhere warmer, you may need to water a little more often. The key though is to check the soil of the plant before watering never water your snake plant when there is moisture in the soil it needs to be pretty much bone dry doing so will result in droopy leaves because they've taken on too much water and the leaf cells become wet and mushy stick your finger into the soil and only water when it feels dry if you have a moisture meter then even better check out my amazon page below for a link to the one i use if you have been overwatering your plant then you have two options either wait it out and wait for the soil to dry out and the plant to bounce back or be more proactive and change the soil to a drier mix. My snake plants often suffer with narrow leaves and it's simply because I've not got them in bright enough spots in my home. This problem occurs when we have this plant in a darker spot and it's stretching itself looking for sunlight giving the leaves a thin appearance. This can look unsightly and once it happens to a leaf, there's unfortunately nothing you can do to thicken it out. Instead, what we need to do is cut the thin leaves out at the base of the plant and move it to a much brighter spot so that it's not searching for the light as much. Yellowing leaves is another super common problem for snake plants. Again, the primary culprit for this is overwatering. This is particularly the case if the yellowing is accompanied by soft leaf tissue. Give the leaves of your plant a light squeeze. If they feel soft and mushy, then they are suffering from overwatering. They should instead feel plump and firm. The fix here is to really get an understanding of how often you should be watering your snake plant in your climate and to always check the soil beforehand. Nutrient deficiencies normally show up with yellowing leaves. Plants need nitrogen to keep leaves vibrant and full of color. And if you're not feeding your plant regularly with fertilizer, then it's gonna run out of juice and start to turn yellow. If this is the case, then put your plant on a fertilizer schedule suitable for houseplants. Confusingly, yellowing leaves can also indicate an over-fertilizer problem. This is when you need to ask yourself how often you've been applying fertilizer to your snake plant and how big a dose you've been giving it. Applying too big a dose is probably the most common cause because people are often unaware that the dosage for indoor and outdoor plants is different. If you give your indoor plants the same dosage as your outdoor plants, then you're giving them too much and the foliage will start to turn yellow. Unfortunately, there's no quick fix here. You need to change the soil, rinse the roots and basically wait it out. The fertilizer is in the cells now, so you just have to wait for the plant to bounce back. Yellow leaves can also indicate that you have a pest problem although this is less likely. Spider mites can take hold of your plant in secret 
suck the sap of the leaves until you start to notice your plant going weak and turning yellow. You want to look for the very fine webbing that the little buggers lay in the nooks and crannies of the foliage. You can also shake the leaves over a white sheet of paper. If you see specks moving around on the sheet, you have a problem. When you see damage due to spider mites, then it's usually too late and it might be worthwhile discarding the plant to avoid the problem spreading to your other house plants. Spider mite damage will also be accompanied by misshapen leaves with the little critters sucking the sap from the leaves weakening the plant in the process. Spider mites love dry conditions and guess what? So does your snake plant. It's like a marriage made in heaven. To fight them off, give your plant a shower to spray the pests off the leaves and then give the plant a thorough wipe down. You can use something like neem oil every week to keep them at bay afterwards. I've mentioned misshapen leaves being caused by spider mites, but this problem can also be caused by one of the most persistent annoying pests going, frips. Frips act in much the same way as spider mites, but without the webbing, and they're much harder to get rid of. You won't be able to see them with the naked eye, so use the shaking foliage over white paper hack to identify if you have any. If you do, then keep the plant away from your other plants in your home at all costs. You don't want the problem to spread. Isolated to one plant, and they can be dealt with, but if spread to lots of your plants, you're in real trouble. One of the best ways to get rid of the problem, apart from binning the plant, is to use beneficial insects to hunt and destroy. If you haven't got a pest problem, but still have twisted or misshapen leaves, then this can also indicate an underwatering problem. This is particularly true if you keep your plant in a hot sunny spot in your home and forget to water it often. Giving the plant a good drink will solve this. When you do water your plant, make sure to give the soil a thorough soaking so that all the roots get saturated and not just a light watering on top of the soil. When you water your plant, you cannot give it too much, so make sure you saturate the roots. Brown spots on the leaves, particularly on the side, can indicate a fungus problem normally stemming from overwatering. If the roots are constantly soggy and the leaves turn mushy, this makes the plant more susceptible to diseases like brown spot and blight. You'll need to change the soil and drastically cut back on the watering and then treat the plant with a fungicide. You should cut out the affected leaves and it should bounce back fairly quickly after this. Brown spots on the leaves can also signify a problem with the water you are using to irrigate the plant. If your tap water is hard, and heavily chlorinated, then you may want to switch to filtered water or rainwater as an alternative and see if the problem improves. Snake plants are native to tropical Western Africa and are therefore fairly sensitive to drops in temperature. In fact, they really don't like to be exposed to temperatures below 12 degrees Celsius or 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures below this will stress the plant out and this takes a toll on the roots and prevents the intake of nutrients, resulting in brown spots on the foliage. Wrinkled leaves is a super common problem on snake plants and normally means you have an underwatered plant on your hands. You're far more likely to overwater your plant than underwater it simply because they are so drought tolerant, but if you completely neglect to water it for months at a time, you'll likely start seeing wrinkling on the leaves. The leaves become deplete with water and the cells begin to shrink, leading to wrinkling. The leaves on your snake plant should be smooth and firm. This won't mean death for your plant if you water it before it's too late. Leave it any longer and your plant will eventually shrivel up and die. If you keep your plant somewhere hot, then you'll probably need to up the watering, but as always, check the soil before you do so. So, you've got yellow mushy leaves with some brown spots on, and you think it's an overwatering problem. The next step is to take the plant out of its pot and have a look at the roots. The root system of this plant isn't extensive, so it's important that the roots the plant does have are healthy. Rotting roots are fairly easy to spot. They'll be either black or turning dark brown and feel mushy when pressed between your fingers. Healthy roots should be plump and a pale yellow or brown color. If the roots are rotten, then it's best to cut them out. This will benefit the plant in the long run and will stop rot from spreading to the rest of the roots. Pruned roots do grow back quite vigorously as long as we treat them well and not overwater them. And it's not just too much water that rots the roots of your snake plant, it's also a lack of oxygen around the roots. This is why it's essential to keep your snake plant in a free draining potting soil that does not retain too much moisture. The worst thing you can do for your plant is to keep it in just compost. This will be far too dense for the roots resulting in a lack of oxygen and eventual rot. Add something like perlite or pumice to your mix to increase oxygen and make for happy roots. And I use about five parts compost and three parts perlite for my mix for snake plants, and this seems to be the sweet spot. Fixing the common issues I've mentioned in this video is great, but will mean nothing if you continue to make four of the most common mistakes that kill snake plants. And I explain what they are in this video here, 
So make sure you click on the link.